What's going on? I wanted to make a video really quick about um, two different loadouts that I have. This will be part one of two. Uh, this is going to be for PvE, player versus environment. Um, to start, this is just a basic AoE loadout that I have. Um, it's nice to be able to switch between this and my single target loadout in dungeons, right? So, you know, the first AoE loadout will be when you're running through just all the trash mobs, like the larger groups of weaker enemies. Um, it's a quick way to be able to blast through them, help your team out by speeding up the run. And then I'll have a separate clip showing you guys the single target loadout that I have. I'm not going to talk too much about the gear. There's plenty of videos out there. You just want to kind of get the best the best stuff that you can get at this point um there's going to be different options of of course you know uh, for the set i'm using the engine master's mantle which um uh, i'll show you really quick i like the set bonus on it increases damage dealt by 2.5 percent um it deals an additional 2.5 percent against demons devils and fiends which is awesome for the avernus kind of area I mean, there's there's plenty of areas, you know, like uh, Demogorgon and stuff that have demons and stuff like that too. But this is mostly for the newer content. Um, with the next mod, I plan on picking up probably the new set that they're gonna have released. Um, I will talk really quickly about enchantments. I was running Bark Shield. Um, I had a Shadow Cloud from PvP, and to be honest, the Bark Shield got nerfed a little bit. So for me, it didn't cost me any kind of money to run my Shadow Cloud now. Um, it's still very helpful when receiving damage. Each hit adds 4% uh, to your deflection, 2% to your defense for 6 seconds. It stacks uh, 8 times until you successfully deflect. Also, when you do that, uh, you become invisible for a little bit, which is kind of a side thing. It's more important for PvP, in my opinion. But, like I said, it was free to me because I already had it, so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, negation is actually a really valuable uh, armor enchant to have running right now. Um, and then for my weapon enchant, I'm using Vorpal. It's pretty much an all-around, you know, um, your critical strike and critical severity is increased by 3%. Your encounter at will daily power deals 6% more damage as arcane, right? Uh, for my defensive slots, I'm using uh, Vicious Enchantments because it's going to add to my critical avoidance and deflection. And then for my offensive slots, I'm using uh, Savage because it's critical strike, critical severity. Basically, what you want to do is just uh, you want to try to... Depending on the class, for the rogue, obviously you want to um, you want to have as much in your offensive stats as possible. So you want to try to cap out critical severity, critical strike, power. I would feel like are the first three. Power is kind of easy to cap now with a new combat change, so I didn't have to put too much. I didn't have any uh, enchantments going towards the power. It's just uh, companions and stuff like that. Accuracy and combat advantage are also very important. However, I wanted to cap out my crit first, um, so I don't have much of my accuracy or combat. My defense, again, was pretty close to being capped just from the gear I'm wearing. So that's why I wanted to have the critical avoidance and uh, the deflect with my enchants. Because in the new mod, apparently critical avoidance is going to be super important. Um, because I'm using the regular Dragonborn, I went and put my points into strength and dexterity. Uh, this adds to critical severity. And this is your physical damage boost, right? And then uh, for artifacts on this one, I'm using a Staff of Flowers. With the combat mod, this actually got a buff. So now um, everybody inside the circle, when you use your your uh, artifact, they gain 15,000 power, 15,000 critical strike. Um, that's 15% to each of those uh, stats, which is actually very, very impressive. Um, also, the foes will move 25% slower, and they're dealt uh, 24,000 damage every second for 15 seconds, right? So nice little AoE thing to have there. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, I guess the second part for the enchantments, I wanted to max out my forte as much as I could. I'm in the process of upgrading these dark enchantments, but because your forte is actually providing you with three stats rather than just one or two, depending on the other enchants you use. So I felt like that was important uh, for this character is power, combat advantage, and deflect severity. So I'm going to go over to the powers real quick. Um, it's not very difficult to figure out <laughs> an AOB, AOE build with this character because you don't have a lot of options for it. Um, but du Duelist Flurry is always nice for single target damage as an at will. And then Gloaming Cut is nice to just finish off uh, the small targets with a little bit of HP left. And when you do kill him, 20% um, of your stealth bar is refilled if you kill him with that attack. I use a uh, Blade Flurry. I use Path of the Blade and I use Smoke Bomb. Uh, these are just my AOE abilities. The cool thing with this one, Blade Flurry, once you're in stealth, um, it increases the radius and the power doesn't go on a cooldown. So you can actually stealth, use it once, and it's not on cooldown. So you could use it back to back. You can put it in a different combination as far as rotations go. Um, I still have Bloodbath is my AOE daily power. 
Um, it's just, it's, it's not an incredible amount of damage because it spreads them out between the different targets, but while you're using and you're flashing around in the bloodbath, you're not actually taking damage. So sometimes, you know, that can help you, it help your healer. So, you know, you're not taking as much damage. You don't go down as quickly. And then I still keep shocking execution just for that single target. Uh, you have the option obviously between the two. I'm using skillful infiltrator, um, mostly because of the 2.5% deflection and critical strike. And then I'm using sneak attack, um, uh, because increases the cooldown rate of your powers while you're in stealth so these aren't horrible but it's 11 and a half seconds there 15.3 and 21 seconds so they are kind of longer on the cooldown side so this one kind of helps you mitigate the the penalty you take for them being on cooldown um i'm using toxic blades damage over time it's just going to add to you know all the excessive damage you're doing to everybody around you master of shadows uh your stealth passively drains 50% as fast and your stealth regeneration is increased by 50%. So again, the longer you're in stealth, the quicker your, your abilities are going to get their cooldown uh, reduced. Duelist Expertise is nice because um, when you get your 16th stack or you leave combat, you're granted Master Duelist. It consumes all the stacks and gives you 15% damage and deflect chance for 10 seconds. That's uh, yeah, unbeatable. And Back Alley Tactics, you deal up to 10% more damage based on how few action points you have. Um, because this build itself doesn't really generate a lot of action points compared to other builds that I've used in the past. Um, there's, and and because when your your daily power is ready, you want to use it as soon as you can, so you can start building up to your next daily power, which contributes to your overall damage in the fight. I feel like this was a good choice because more times than not, you're gonna have less action points, so you could potentially deal up to 10 percent more damage. Then I use Shadow's Flurry. Uh, your attacks have a 5% chance to spawn a shadowy figure that uses the final combo of Duelist Flurry on the target. Um, again, for this, this is my AoE loadout, so I felt like this was a better choice rather than execution. This is nice too, when your enemy is under 20% life, your attacks have a 10% chance to execute the enemy. But for trash mobs, generally, once they're under 20% life, they're about to die within the next second anyway, so I just felt like that was a better option there. Um, the boons I didn't change too much between my two separate loadouts here. You know, you just want to max the stats that uh, you're lacking basically. So I'm putting them in, you know, defensive, offensive, all the way across the board. Deflect severity here. Um, the only ones I would say uh, point out is like I wanted to max out the percentage of my forte gives. Again, same with the dark enchantments. And then I'm using this one. Um, increases your action point gain by 1% per rank. So that's a 4% action point gain. Again, the, the longer or the more often you can use your daily power, the more damage you're putting down. Um, this is a uh, chance on encounter use to do one of the following. You can decrease the target's defense by 1%. You can do an additional attack equal to 120% of your weapon damage plus 10% per rank. Or increase your action point gain by 0.5% uh, rank. And with your, your guild stronghold, Again, you just want to kind of maximize whatever stats you're lacking. So I'm using crit. I'm using defense. Um, this one, I go between uh, the treasure hunter or even the potions one sometimes. But a lot of times I'm just running around, so I want to move faster. And um, as far as companions, so this is the, the cool part that I wanted to show you. With my AOE loadout, I'm using the, the chicken. Now, the chicken got kind of nerfed in this last mod because it used to do a lot more single target damage than it does now. However... Now instead of swarm, when when it uses this ability swarm, let me show you guys real quick. Um, it causes a swarm of abyssal chickens to attack your target. It used to just be two, but now it's three chickens. So it's actually doing less damage per target, but it could spread out uh, to a lot more targets. So that's why I chose uh, the chicken for my AOE loadout. Um, with the equipment, the actual equipment itself, I'm trying to focus and cap my uh, critical severity. So all three of my pieces are exactly the same. But for the rune stones, I'm using indomitables. I have 115, the rest are 13s, but um, it increases the damage that your your companion is doing, right? So with these indomitable rune stones in uh, conjunction with this ability, when you have the chicken, you want to you want to be able to slot this into one of your slots. It's universal, right? But when you kill an enemy, you have 15% chance to summon an abyssal chicken for 10 seconds. And what that means is that when you kill an enemy, you can potentially have two chickens and if those two chickens swarm instead of having three you have six of them swarming at any time which is a great way to burn down like large groups of enemies right um i'm using the baby's deep crow presence there's another ability that would actually be a little bit more beneficial if other people in your party have it as well right so if you go down if uh, you have to have the let me show you the companion 
the tame velociraptor now the cool thing is you don't actually have to have the raptor summoned to get the benefit of um to be able to slot it the raptor's instincts right but this is a the the equip value is you are part of the pack you and any allies that are part of the pack gain 3.8 percent power and it can stack up to five times now again my power is pretty much capped on this character but the cool thing is if you're running in a group of let's say at least three people that have this equipped too and they all have it to mythic level that's over 10 something percent i think almost 11 percent um damage or, or, or increase to your power rather than i think my baby yeah 7.5 there and that's with three people so five people obviously is going to be a lot stronger so it's just another option there if you want to um maximize your critical or your your power there uh, the baby bullets presence got a buff also. I really like this one just for survivability If you take more than 20% of your maximum HP in a single blow you heal for 22% over the next five seconds Which is actually nice you get all that uh, HP back plus a little extra 2% It can only happen once every 60 seconds, but that's pretty much every other little group of mobs that you're running into So it's a nice way to keep your survivability up make it easier on your healer I'm using this one specifically for critical severity and defense um and then really my utility power, I just don't have anything better to put there. So 30,000 HP, eh, eh, nothing crazy, I guess. Um, I'm using Armor Breaker again because I wanted to try to max out my critical severity there. Uh, and I'm using the combat, uh, the, the uh, Giant Toad Tongue Lash, mostly because there is an AOE one. Well, there's a few different ones, but the Explosive Equalizer is not bad, right? The magnitude is a thousand and it hits all your, your nearby enemies, but I found there is a little bit of a lag when you use this and I don't like that because it messes up my timing on other attacks. So I just keep the combat power because even if you are just hitting trash mobs, you know, there's usually one strong minion that's standing in the way afterwards. So I just take them out with that. Um, you know, it's at a minute cooldown after you make it, uh, I think, legendary or mythic. So using those. Um, the other point here I want to show is that... Uh, Warlord's Inspiration is one of the insignia bonuses you can get, and it says your summon companion does 20% more damage. Now these uh, have diminishing returns, so from my understanding, the second time you use it, it's actually only giving you 10%. I think the third time would be 5%. I didn't want to sacrifice these other ones that you can have for the extra 5% damage from your companion, but I felt like the two was enough, so that's an extra 30% damage that my companion is doing there. And then again, if you go back to the indomitable uh, runestones here, that's 16, 16, 16, 16, and uh, 16 to 20%. So you're getting quite a bonus um, just for you know rearranging your insignia bonuses there too. Um, and then again, these are just more defensive stuff. So when you're stunned, knocked, or immobilized, I get a heal over time. Um, if I take more than 35% of my maximum HP in a pre-mitigated damage from a single blow, receive buff to defense, critical avoidance, to deflect, and awareness, which is actually quite a large buff. It's 2,500 for each of those stats, right? And at the same time, again, if I get hit for 35%, then that means that I'm also taking t over 20%, which I'll, I'll heal a lot of that back. And then plus, it's going to buff my defensive stats, right? So then... And when reduced to 50% health points, receive a heal over time and stamina. Which again, these can all work together. Maybe I get stunned at the same time and then it's reducing me to 50%. So to buff all my defenses, I get a heal over time from this. And then I get a heal over time from the baby bullets present. So again, those are just basically um, for my survivability on a personal level. Uh, you could choose other options. There are some more offensive ones that uh, you guys can check out. So that's just going to be the basic loadout, and I'm just going to show you guys a clip. I need to move my enchantment back over here, but I'm going to just show you guys a clip of me killing some trash mobs, and then I will start the second video to show you my single target loadout, and just kind of show you in conjunction how they work uh, really well together. So. Yo, DJ, put a nigga back to the record, baby, and give me this shit right now.